Houston, are you ready? Put your hands together for Ali Sadiq. Hey. <laughs> Let me start by saying this. In life, people um, make, you make a lot of mistakes in your life. And you go through things, and you should have went right, but you went left. You know, you zig when you should have zagged. Things happen. But you don't get a chance to pinpoint a lot of times when you went wrong. And I don't know if y'all know about me, but I was I used to be a street pharmaceutical rep, which is very frowned upon. <laughs> and I had I had enough time to think about how I got there. Cause you know, I, I had six years in prison, so I had enough time to contemplate on the mistakes that I made. So I got it down to the exact year where my mistakes happened. <laughs> So it's 1983. I'm 10 years old. Oh, yeah, my mistakes started very early. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, people complain about certain things, like, you know, I was raised without a father. And sometimes you don't know how lucky you are. You know, because if you had a daddy like mine, you would have just you shouldn't have just had one. You should just have went without. <laughs> so 1983, my, my dad comes to my mother's house, and he wants to talk to my mother about can he talk to his kids about living with him. Now, the problem, this is the problem, that <laughs> my daddy left when I was three, and now I'm 10, so that's seven years. And it's not like, it's not like I haven't seen him. You know, I saw him every blue moon. I saw him every blue moon. Like, not like, you know, like out. Like, you'd be out and your mom would be like, there go your daddy, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not talking like schedule visits. No, not like schedule visits. You talking about this like randomly, you in the grocery store, your daddy checking out, you walking in, you know, like that. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I've seen my daddy. I know who he is, but, what made him think <laughs> that me or my sister was going to want to stay with him after only this, like, random interactions with him? And he hasn't been a parent. This is my problem with him. What was he watching? Like, Kramer versus Kramer or <laughs> different strokes or some shit? What was he watching to think that he could do it? Because being a parent, day-to-day -day parenting, is different from visitation. Because visitation has a return date. Right. Like, Thursday at noon, you going home. <laughs> you know, but to keep me without no, no pickup time, you know, that's weird. Because I don't know him like that. So, <laughs> second mistake that was made, my mama said, OK. My mother thinking. Well, maybe my mother was like, ain't no way my children are gonna go live with a stranger. Maybe she was thinking that. Or maybe my mama was tired of us. I don't know. <laughs> my mama walked in the room, and I'm confused by all of this. My mama walked in the room and asked us, so what y'all wanna do? First of all, you're not supposed to ask your children what they wanna do. I don't have enough. I don't have enough information or cognitive intervention skills to make a rational decision about this. My decision is based on that my daddy has been fun when I have seen him every blue moon. <laughs> now, my mama has never cared about what we wanted to do before. 
So I'm wondering why is this lady asking this? I'm talking about, I raised my children the same way my mama raised me. I don't ask my kids what they want to eat. Never. I put food down in front of them like wild animals. There it is. <laughs> Under my mama rules, eat or die. Yeah, it's on you, shit. Ain't my decision no more. I put the food out there. Because y'all probably ask y'all kids what they want to eat. Ask them nothing, because then you'll become a goddamn short order cook for your children. <laughs> they keep just, everybody gonna want something different. You making pancakes, waffles, and omelets. You know, if y'all think culinary school, you think I went to, shit. Uh, so I don't, I don't ask. And I, I remember, my mama never asked me what I, what I wanted to do. I remember when I used to hate oatmeal. I used to hate oatmeal. I love oatmeal now, because me and oatmeal have had a situation. <laughs> It tastes like it, but hate it. My mama came in with some oatmeal to my this for breakfast. I'm like, I don't want that. She said, Well, you gonna eat? I said, No, I'm not. She said, Well, you gonna sit there? I said, Well, I'll be here. My mama said, You'll be there until your ass fall off. <laughs> and you think in your mind, your mama crazy here. How your ass gonna fall off? <laughs> but anybody that has sat in a chair long enough know that your ass can fall off. <laughs> Your whole, all this just numb. <laughs> your legs tingling, you can't even stand up on these little tingle ass legs. <laughs> so, my daddy comes in, cause my, under my mama's permission, and asks me and my sister, hey, um, but see, my mama, she thinking that I'm gonna say no but she's sadly mistaken. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go because I have been living in this house with my mama and my sister and my other sister. It's just girls and me. And I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of bathing in Dove. <laughs> Can't find no unscented lotion nowhere in this damn house. So, as soon as my daddy my daddy didn't even get the whole sentence out. He said, anybody want to? I said, I'll live with you. <laughs> and my sister, two years older than me, my sister wasn't going for that shit. My sister took two steps back like, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> I should have listened to her because my sister been knowing him longer. She two years older. And I'm packing my shit up. And my sister giving me the eye. She like, <laughs> you sure? <laughs> and I'm, 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 I'm leaving. And, and, and I'm out. And my sister looking at me like, hey, you know, mama house got a lot of amenities. <laughs> but the thing is, my daddy is fun. My mama is no fun. Because see, my mama in a different situation. She raising two kids, trying to take care of everybody. My daddy is a bachelor. He living his goddamn life. So, <laughs> My daddy, a lot of fun, man. My first week in my daddy's house, my daddy was my first crab bowl. Yeah, we in the store, and we in the seafood section, and he see me looking at these crab. I'm looking at them crab. My daddy says, hey, boy. <laughs> you want some of them crab? <laughs> now, I don't, know what to, I don't know how to respond, because this is not my first time seeing these crab. I done been, I done been in this store before, and I done seen these crab with my mama. <laughs> and my mama, I'm in there looking at them crab. My mama say, boy, you want some of them crab? I said, yeah. And my mama said, do you want to eat for a day or do you want to eat for a month? I said, <laughs> I don't know our financial situation. How crab was $5.99. My mama was like, shit, you ain't getting that. <laughs> my daddy, fun. My daddy different. My daddy said, so, I, you know, when I said, yeah, got hollered at. So now I don't know how to respond. I'm, I'm. <laughs> my daddy, you was on your crab? I'm like, maybe. 
saying? Well, shit, we can, you can have some of them crab shit. My man, my man, shit. How many crab you want? Oh, shit, you don't know what you want. Um, <laughs> let me get on. Um, let me get 15 pounds of them crab. I'm sitting there like, ooh, shit. <laughs> we ain't gonna never eat again. It's <laughs> a lot of crab, a lot of months. <laughs> My daddy fun. My daddy, you can go outside, live your life. Something happened to you, it happened. My mama, no fun. You know, it's things that were supposed to be fun, like going outside was supposed to be fun. You're supposed to get in adventurous shit. My mama had a lot of rules, a lot of rules, man. And with my mama, everything was based on life or death. <laughs> And my mama called me and my sister in the room. Hey, come here, both of y'all. I need to talk to y'all right now. <laughs> need y'all listening to me, you understand? Because this is a matter of life and death. I'm going to give you a key. You put that key on your neck. And you don't let nobody know you had this key. You understand me? Because they will kill you. That's a lot of pressure for a child. The front door key, you got the front door key around your neck. And you seven. And you outside playing. And you notice that that goddamn key ain't around your neck. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm about to die, I need to find my key. I wasn't even over here, why is my key? Now, now you so nervous and you about to break down. Now you got to go through the apartments and find your sister. Cause she the only other one with a key. You walking through the apartment, you don't know where your sister is, you just walking through the apartment. Erica! <laughs> and you an ass a stranger. You like, hey man, you see my sister. <laughs> your sister see you from a distance. She noticed you already crying. She know what's wrong. As soon as she get up on you, boy, where your kid at? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we gon' <all> die. <laughs> my sister's like, no, nah, I got my key, nigga. You go. I got my key. My mama was no fun. You couldn't get, I don't know if y'all had this type of mama that you, you ever had that mama that told you, don't go over there. Yeah. She told you not where to be. And you done went over there. <laughs> and you done got hurt. <laughs> but you can't stay over there. You got to get to neutral ground. <laughs> broke your leg, bro. You got the bell crawl. <laughs> I can't get caught over there. I wasn't supposed to be over there. Let me get to the playground where I was supposed to be. I'm outside, and before I went outside, my mama, she told me, she said, hey, you going outside, don't be like them other little badass little boys. The pool is closed. Don't jump that damn gate and be over there by that damn pool. It's closed. Outside, 15 minutes. Everybody else had jumped that gate. My goof had right over that gate, too. Now you know, something gonna happen, cause kid is bad as hell. I get pushed in the pool. I have never taken a swim lesson in my life. My mama, cause you know mama's got a different type of sense. My mama just heard the splash. And came outside. I don't know how she knew it was her baby. Came outside, I saw my mama as I was going down. <laughs> and I swam underwater to those sun. <laughs> Got out that water. 
by the time my mama got downstairs, I was out that pool. <laughs> my mama jumped the gate. <laughs> your ass better been out that goddamn water by the time I got down here. I was gonna beat your ass while you was drowning. <laughs> my mama wasn't gonna let a goddamn drown save me from an ass woman. Ain't that something? My mama was no fun, man. But my mama house had a lot of amenities. <laughs> my mama house was set up for children. My daddy is a bachelor. It's not, we not, it's not set up right. Like, my mama got stuff like groceries. <laughs> and, and my mama quality, man. My mama a lot of quality, man. And, and it's different. You know, a lot of black people talk about they grew up poor. I never say that, because I didn't grow up poor. We saw it, but we didn't want to be a part of it, so we kept it moving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but, but my mom, I don't even know how my mom and my daddy met, because they two different type of people. My mama is very quality. She's a very quality person. And my daddy, mm, not so much. <laughs> You know, and, and living with, moving in with him showed me the difference very fast. You pick up things very fast. In my mama's pantry, as long as I had been living there, um, in my mama's pantry, she would have canned goods. And the canned goods would have a picture of what was in the can and a company on the can that was responsible for what was in the can. My daddy pantry, um, just black and white cans <laughs> with just words on it. Corn, <laughs> peas, rice, rice in a can? <laughs> Is it cooked? What kind of rice is in a can? <laughs> and he would never know what kind of corn was in the can. Because you know, it's different types of corn. It's cream of corn, whole corn, sweet corn. I'd be like, Daddy, what, what, what kind of corn is it? He's like, I don't know. We both going to be surprised. <laughs> and when you were a kid, it's, it's only a couple things that's important to you when you were a kid. It's only a couple things. Because you were a kid, you don't have no responsibilities. What's important is cereal and your sneakers. That's it. Good cereal for breakfast in the morning, sneakers for your feet. That's it. My mama, very quality woman. Very quality woman. She would buy cereal that had a commercial. <laughs> and some representation. You know, like Sugar Smacks. Remember Sugar Smacks had that cool ass bear, like he was trying to sell you heroin. Hey, you want some Sugar Smacks? <laughs> Everybody wants to smack, no smacks, okay? No, no, no respect, no smacks. <laughs> Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops had a bird, two cans, flying around. Who owns some Fruit Loops? And my daddy would buy this shit called Fruity O's. <laughs> and when you were a kid, you supposed to pour cereal out of a box. You ain't supposed to, it, cause this shit came in a big ass potato sack bag. You ain't supposed to take no bowl and scoop no goddamn cereal out no bag like chicken feed. And you stand in front of the refrigerator with this big ass bowl of scoop cereal. You like, Daddy ain't no milk. He's like, the milk in the cabinet. In the cabinet? <laughs> yeah, you gonna have to add water. Add water to milk? in the kitchen to my, hey, it's almost ready. Shake it, so what the hell are you been, what's almost ready? The milk? <laughs> milk is supposed to already be ready, sir. <laughs> my daddy, my mama quality person, man. She would buy us name brand sneakers. So we had good quality shoes 
on our feet. My daddy, man, my daddy would just buy shit that he just saw in the grocery store. He just rolled through the grocery store. He sees some shoes, he's like, man, try them shoes on right there. I want them shoes. Why would I, man, them shoes are hanging by the bread. Why would I want some shoes that's hanging by the bread? Ain't even no other shoes in here, it's just them shoes. My daddy make you try them shoes on too. And you know, grocery store shoes be tied together with some little hard plastic thing. And you would have them shoes on, you'd be like, man, turn around, let me see. I can't turn around, I got on shackle shoes. <laughs> Daddy, man. And I know sometimes, you know, people think I'm being hard on my father. I'm not, because my, my daddy was not ready to be a parent. I don't know why he came over there playing with me. <laughs> so now my mama, she washed clothes. My dad is a maniac. So, screwed up, some time passed. I've been with this man for a little bit. And, um, man, I got to go to school. It is 19. 84, I gotta take y'all back. It's 1984 now. I've been living with this crazy man, and there's a man came out in 1984 by the name of Billy Ocean. Remember Billy Ocean? Billy Ocean. Black men love Billy Ocean. Had a little, he had his little curl, and he had a song called Caribbean Queen. And, and when the song came out, he had a video that he came out the ocean, and he had these bikini drawers on. Y'all remember the video? He come out the video. Caribbean queen, now you're sharing the same dream. And our hearts will be at one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love Bill Ocean, right? So, if you go back to 1984, on the stock market, one of the hottest items on the stock market was bikini drawers. <laughs> Black men had them by the drawers. They buy bikini drawers in the 80s. Now, I come downstairs after I took my shower. Come downstairs. <laughs> Look at that. I ain't got no underwear in my drawer. My daddy said, well, she, we're going upstairs to my room, <laughs> looking at that top drawer. Put on some of them bikini underwear. <laughs> now, <laughs> now to a lot of people, they thinking, well, what's the problem? Your underwear are under your pants. Anybody gonna see your underwear? But see, I just told y'all it's 1984. I'm in school. You know what happens in school? P.E. <laughs> Physical education. And what happens in, in the 80s in physical education, you had to dress out. You had to take your clothes off and put some gym shorts on and a school shirt and go outside and play. Now, I totally forget that I got these bikini drawers on. <laughs> I done took my pants off. My homeboy Denard turned around, boy, you got on panties. <laughs> But now, Billy Ocean, Caribbean. <laughs> it's my daddy. I know, I know people thinking, well, I ain't really just heard nothing that bad just yet about your daddy. Your daddy just seemed like a normal, delusional bachelor. <laughs> so, okay. Been living with this man a little bit, and I'm asleep, I'm asleep. And the man comes in. This is like the, about the third month in. Been living with this man about three months. This was the really the first sight. I just went on home. That man walked in my room. Really, it was his weight room that he turned into my room. Okay. <laughs> walked into my room and said, hey, I'm asleep, 12.30. In the a.m., the man say, say, look, look here. You, you sleep? <laughs> I, say, I say, yeah, what's up? He say, man, look here. 
I'm about to go out of town. <laughs> Man, I, well, I got to go to school. And watch it. I know you got to go to school. I said, I'm going out of town. I ain't saying about you. He said, so go to school, eat you some fruit oats before you go. I said, boy, eat some fruit oats before I go. <laughs> he don't go to school. I said, you leaving me here, though? <laughs> what, you scared? I said, yes. <laughs> I ain't never been in the house by myself before. What's wrong with you? <laughs> My daddy said, I, you scared and pulls out a two-shot derringer, black and white, pearl handle. He said, now here, if somebody come in the house, you know what to do. I said, no, I do not know what to do. Who you been talking to that told you I know what to do? I am 10, I do not know what to do. He said, now look, that's all preliminary. Now, I got some other things I need you to do. Now, it's gonna be at this back door. Some people gonna knock on this back door. <laughs> Keep the chain on the door. It's gonna be $15. You get their money, go upstairs, you get the stuff, you get that to them, close the door, lock it. I'll see you tomorrow. So it's about 12.35, he gone. I'm thinking, my daddy playing. <laughs> I go to sleep, I'm do, 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 do. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Man, I need a uh, 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 get. 15, go up, lock the door, go up there, do the business, boom, go back, I'm back asleep. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, same thing, back asleep. Do, 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 do. I said, this goddamn door is cracking. <laughs> I go, you know, door been cracking all night. So I gotta go to school tomorrow. They up, up in time going to school. I get, I'm in school. I'm sleeping. I just... Get bro, I get sent to the office for sleeping in class. I get home, my daddy is sitting at the table. <laughs> Come here, let me talk to you. Why am I receiving phone calls? <laughs> from the school talking about you being asleep in class. I said, I don't know if you check your little box upstairs, <laughs> but your little box is full of money because this little dough was busy. My daddy said, shit, it was like that. My daddy has injected this, this hustle in me. And I really don't know how broad my daddy business is. Cause see, that was some little pills that he was selling. Now, this is the time that I should have just went and got that rotary phone <laughs> and called my mother and say, I'ma meet you on the corner <laughs> with my belongings. <laughs> I am my, I'm having tooth problems 
my, my teeth is cutting through my gums. <laughs> and I come downstairs in the middle of the night, my daddy is at the table with his two friends, Ivory and James. And I, this, this is looking different to me, because I know Ivory and James. I've been seeing them a while. Ivory, James, and my daddy sitting at the table, and they got a cool whip container, and they got these little vials and spoons, and they dumping this white stuff in these little vials. This is when I find out my daddy sells cocaine. And Ivory and James got on gun holsters, and ain't nobody got no shirt on, though, but they got on gun holsters. <laughs> and I'm saying, boy, this is a gangsta-ass game on Monopoly they playing. <laughs> Money all on the table. And I come down and say, I said, Daddy, I, um, my teeth hurt. James say, shit, let me see. <laughs> he said, yeah, his wisdom teeth cutting in the back. My daddy said, come here, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Open your let me see. Let me see, Open your face just numb. <laughs> I'm just playing with my face. It feel like rubber. I'm, it's great. I can't even feel nothing. My daddy put cocaine on my teeth. <laughs> the man was not ready to be a parent. <laughs> it wasn't. Now, I finally leave my daddy after being there for four years, staying with my daddy. Learn some things. My daddy was a good dude. Learn some things. My daddy tell me real gangster shit. Hey, look here. You don't never hope you hustle. You understand me? That's a gangster thing. You don't hope you hustle. You know what I'm saying? The same shit you can do for somebody else, you do for your goddamn self. You ain't got to work for nobody. Never work for nobody. My daddy say, hey, I always be clean and fresh. I'm always clean and fresh. It's like I learned shit from my daddy. Now, as parents, you still got to watch what you say to your children. Now, I'm back living with my mama, and my mama has this slogan that she's been saying since I was 10 years old. You gotta get your ass out of here at 18. <laughs> she been saying this as long as I can remember. Anytime something go bad, that's my mama go to. You know something? Don't even fucking worry about it, because you gotta get your ass out of here at 18. <laughs> you should actually stop saying that to your children. Because, see, that's something wrong to say, but then when that, that wrong advice, that wrong mentality gets met with a wrong situation. So hence, this is the beginning of my street pharmaceutical life. <laughs> my mama moves into these apartments, which is some very nice apartments, but the people, she didn't survey the people <laughs> that lived in the apartments. People are different from the apartments. The aesthetics of the apartments are nice, the people are ignorant as hell. So <laughs> I'm in these apartments, and I meet this dude named Jeffrey. Jeffrey, a cool little cat, you know what I'm saying? But he always on punishment, so I don't know. We, can, we really can't play that much, because he, he got to go in the house. Um, now, as I'm outside kicking it with Jeffrey, in the 80s, it was a lot of weird dudes in the 80s. A lot of weird-looking dudes in the 80s that had a lot of Badass advice. <laughs> now, I'm kicking it with my partner Jeffrey, and it's this dude named Willie. I have never met a good Willie ever. <laughs> I don't know no good Willies. <laughs> and me and Jeffrey sitting there, Willie pull up in a cutlass. It's his mama cutlass, but he acting like it's his. He pull up in the cutlass. And he get out the car, and Willie look crazy. He an 80s cat, because in the 80s, everybody had good dental insurance, so that boy got an extra row of teeth at the bottom, <laughs> like piranha style. That boy got an extra row of teeth. And he got one of them, them remember them, them people who had them curls that didn't take all the way? It's just a wet, <laughs> just, it's just really just wet, curly hair. Just wet hair. With activator on it, basically. <laughs> and he would wear, one of them, them, them car dealing caps. You know, they'd be white, they'd be green with the white trimming. When you deal car, he had this boy over it, and it'd be wet. But Willie had on something that piqued my interest. Willie had on a fresh ass tracksuit. 
That tracksuit was fresh as shit. Yo, 80s was, was tracksuits. Boy, that boy had this fresh ass tracksuit on. I was like, boy, them teeth fucked up. That tracksuit fresh. <laughs> Motherfucker, boy. <laughs> Willie get, Willie get out of the car. I see him get out the color. Willie walk over to Jeff. He said, what's up, Jeffrey, little young cat? What's up, baby? Who this is you got with you? <laughs> Jeff say, that's my, that's my partner, Ali. He just moved over here. He used to stay with his daddy, he just moved over here. Well, say, the Willie looked right at me. Who is you, nigga? <laughs> he just told you. I'm, I'm Ali, and um, I just moved over here. I was living with my daddy. Boy, say, you living with your daddy? Oh, that wild head, this boy got a daddy. He does some crazy shit. <laughs> Like, everybody got a daddy, don't they? What's <laughs> that shit? Hey, man, what you do, though? I mean, I, I, I just moved over here. He said, man, I don't know if you know I'm not a youngster, but everybody over here hustle. I say, for what? <laughs> My mama got a job. I don't, I don't need to hustle. He said, nah, nigga, you gonna want shit. You know what I'm saying? I see, yeah, you gonna definitely want shit. I see what them goddamn grocery store shoes are going <laughs> And I ain't really never been talked about before. This boy Willie, this boy, boy out here with some aisle sixes on around here, man. Ah, damn, man. Boy, and Willie talking crazy. Hey, say, say, hey, man, give me some scissors, man. Somebody cut this nigga strain. Cut his strain. <laughs> and Willie is going in on me. And I and I, I didn't tell y'all, my daddy wouldn't just buy me shoes from the grocery store. He would he would buy me them the workman pants. <laughs> that they sell in the grocery store, the workman pants. And then boy Willie, then boy Willie noticed that I had the workman pants on the bus, say, say my say, 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 man, say, 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 look at that. Uh, I just wanna know, man, you got a job. <laughs> I said, no, I ain't got no job. Why you got them goddamn workman pants on then, boy? I don't like none of this shit. <laughs> I can't even say nothing. Willie got on a fresh ass track too. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so now I'm thinking about it. Boy said, I'm a one thing. Then he said, man, everybody over here hustle. And then what's, what's illuminating in my mind is that I gotta get out my mama house at 18. I ain't got no savings. <laughs> I ain't got nothing. So that boy said, yeah, everybody over here hustling, man. I said, what y'all do? He said, man, we sell dope. I said, nah, you supposed to say no to dope. I, <laughs> I seen the commercials and everything. You know, like the, the, the crime dog come on there, say no to dope, you know. <laughs> he said, man, shit, they say no to dope when they talking about you using it, boy. We ain't using it, we selling it, boy. We, we ain't selling it to nobody who don't want it. I said, <laughs> Shit made sense to me. <laughs> and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, shit, I gotta get my ass out of my mama's house at 18. I got four more years. <laughs> Sound like a good come up. He said, man, yeah, man. I said, well, how you, how you start? He said, shit, you gonna have to get you a 50 pack, bro. So what you gonna have to do is start with it. See, people don't realize everybody start with a 50. All that shit you be seeing on TV, well, somebody getting dope and all of a sudden they Nino Brown or Kingpin now. Cause see, the reason why I tell my stories the way I tell them, because see, people, they glorify the shit. I'ma tell you the hard shit that happened. So these young boys know, hey man, you can get into the shit if you want to, just know some shit gonna happen to you. It ain't, this shit ain't the movies. This ain't blue magic, nigga. This ain't, you know, Denzel went home, nigga, after the movie. Nigga. They were packing the luggage up. So I don't see y'all you know, with, with the Equalizer 3. She, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but when you actually in this shit, this shit is a lot harder than people think. A 50-pack 
it changes everything. It's a lot of ways this shit can go. Really, only two. Either you can go to jail early, <laughs> or you can go to jail late, either way. <laughs> but your ass going to jail. Man. So, <laughs> the 50 pack, get you a 50. Off a of 50, you can make anywhere from 110 to 120, depending on your cut, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, you don't know that. Because ain't nobody, this shit don't come with no manual. <laughs> ain't nobody walking you through the steps of dope sales. You like, you just out there. You know what I'm saying? And people don't know that. They think, oh, like, you got a team, and the team is, you know, everybody got appointment, like, you got HR in crack sales. Look. <laughs> Man, let me tell you this, this motherfucker shorted me on the last <laughs> So. <laughs> so this shit is different. So, I, you know, Willis said, you get, your, you get your fitted pack. I said, where you get that from? He said, Ronell. Ronell is the dude that supply all the young boys in the neighborhood. Ronell is like the G money of this crew, because it's a dude that's above Ronell. That's the big man that you really don't want to run into. You just want to just deal with Ronell. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm young and naive. I don't even know why I approached Ronell. Ronell is sitting on a red scooter, and he got, at the time, I didn't know what the gun was, but he got a Tech 9 strapped across his chest. And I walk over with my goof ass. I'm like, uh, hey, uh, you Ronell? He said, nigga, who is you? I say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Ali. I just moved over here. I was living with my daddy. Um, <laughs> um, they said, I'm supposed to get a 50 from you. Right now, I said, nigga, do you even sell dope, nigga? <laughs> and, and I've been like a smart kid, like, all my life. I said, not until you give it to me. <laughs> My money back, nigga, just understand. This is a motherfucking situation of life and death, little nigga. <laughs> my, got my little 50, huh? I come back over the wheeler and then my name, boy, I got the 50. <laughs> but I don't know what's next. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to sell this shit for 60 and get this nigga 50 and you keep the 10, but I'm thinking. <laughs> It's gonna be a hard way to come up, nigga. You gotta do it $10 at a time, man. It's a lot of months out here, man. A lot of months. <laughs> so, my father, dog said, hey, man, you got to cut the shit up. I say, with what? With a razor. Where you get that from? He said, man, I, man I'm gonna show you my shit. So, he, he cut it, he said, man, let me tell you, you're gonna have to cut some nickels, some dimes and some doing it. I say, man, <laughs> I, I took a little, little, little ceramic class, and this don't look like enough <laughs> to make nickels and dimes. Boy, ain't no, boy, you ain't making no damn pennies and pieces, boy. <laughs> the size of the shit make it with it. I'm gonna show you. So he cut it up, then it nudges on the table. And I'm like, where am I supposed to put all this stuff? He said, you're gonna have to put some, put it in something. He said, I put my shit in the matchbox. So I'm going through my mama's house, trying to find some. I find a film bottom. I take the film out, I put all my shit in the film box. He said, well, come on, man, let's get on out of here. We on the dope cut. This is my first time on dope cut. Ain't nobody gave me no rules, though. You know, so I'm just out there, and it's a lot of traffic. It's a lot of business going on. Everybody walking up to people, and they walking off, and then they walking, and they getting shit, and they walking. And, um, <laughs> and, and you know, people coming up fast, and they sometimes they got something in their hand, they, what's up, and then they go. You know what I'm <laughs> and I don't know when to get in there, because, you know, <laughs> it's like everybody got their own, they own customers, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there, oh, no, that's you right there? Okay, cool, you know. Oh, oh, she done came to you like three times. She done, that must be you. So I didn't, Jeffrey's like, hey, man, you gonna, fuck, you gonna have to get out there, man. 
So I jump out there, and this dude, he, he, I, hey, what's up? This dude walk up to me, he's just looking at me, and I'm looking at him. I turn around and say, no. Is he supposed to say something? Are he supposed to tell me? Then Jeffrey gonna slide in front of me. Get the fuck out the way. You tripping out here, tripping. I gotta go back in the house. I'm on punishment, boy. <laughs> Jeffrey make the little sale and he going, and then Willie gonna tell me, hey man, this side ain't for you. Go down now where the car's at. Your silly ass. <laughs> so I go down, cause now it's people in car. They pulling up and people running up to the cars and, and they boom, 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 and they gone. I don't, I don't know what they got in their hand. I'm just, you know, so I'm, let me put my little shit. I got two rocks in my hand. I, get, I, I wanna give people, you know, choices. I don't know. <laughs> you know, customer service, you know, trying to get. I run up to this car and I and I, I say, what's happening, man? What you need? And I, and I put my hand in the car. And I put my hand in the car, and that man hit my hand and drove off. Huh? <laughs> Jeffrey came and said, hey! Hey, man, did you just come here? Man, come. I said, Jeff, what's up? Man, did you just put your hand in that car? I said, yeah. Did you have some dope in your hand? I said, yeah. That man popped your hand, didn't he? I, I said, yeah, but I think he gonna come around and come back. He said, man, that man not coming back. The man took that. You, man, you paid Ronell yet? I said, paid, paid him what? The fi man, come over here. I said, put, put all your dope right here. He, he, he. You can't lose no more dope. This is a matter of life and death. <laughs> so now I know I can't lose, I can't lose no more dough. And um, it's not easy. It's not easy. People be thinking that it's not easy because it's no clean sales. All, all this shit is criminal activity. The person who's smoking is a criminal, and you are. <laughs> so it's not, it's not gonna be fair, but, people, but you don't know that. You don't know it's not gonna be fair. You think it, people do fair business. It was a, so I'm thinking, first sale, I'm thinking it's gonna be clean. I think it's gonna be clean. I see this dude named Kirk. See Kirk, boom, 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 walking. Kirk said, what's up, youngster? I said, what's happening? He said, man, you got something? Something like what? Man, let me get a dime from you. So I, I go on my little film, but I turn my back this time. I don't want nobody all of my shit. <laughs> Pull a dime in my hand, I come up, boom, boom. I give him the dime, he give me the 10. And I'm saying, I'm thinking that it's clean sale. I turn around, it's a lady standing there. I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? Bam, she punched me in the goddamn job. <laughs> so I push her, I'm like, bitch, what you doing? <laughs> And then the dude jump on me, and I'm fighting both of them. I'm like, I'm fighting a goddamn dolphin couple out here. <laughs> I'm out here fighting a goddamn couple. I, I said, man, I'm 14. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> I get away from them. I'm coming through the, through the neighborhood kind of quick. I'm like, what the fuck? And I see Jeff. I see Jeff. Jeff say, man, what's wrong with you? I said, man, I said to this dude, and then this lady hit him in the jaw. He said, oh, Kirk and Gwendolyn. <laughs> Oh boy, ain't no clean sales with them. You see Kirk, you got to watch for Gwen. You see Gwen, you got to watch for Kirk. But they wild. <laughs> boy, I was selling to Kirk the other day, boy. I, I'm looking, I'm looking everywhere. I'm looking high and low too, boy. I sell him. I think it's a clean sale. I turn around, this bitch jump out the tree on me. I say, oh, this bitch crazy. <laughs> Anybody told me? That it's a dope fiend couple out here jumping on goddamn people. <laughs> now, you know, I'm coming through, still walking through the neighborhood, this dude named Champ. Champ is a big dude. Champ is a known, from what I understand, my first experience with him, Champ is a known dope biter. <laughs> he bites your dope. 
Man, see, hustlers know. Hustlers like, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Dude, dudes say, yeah, I see I had one of them before. Oh, that boy, that boy come up, champ. He say, hey, young, hey, man, let me get something, man. Shit. I say, man, what you need? He say, man, let me see what you got, baby. Man, put my hand out. He say, let me get this right here. Nah, that's too, that's too small. I say, nah, motherfucker, it was bigger before you beat it. <laughs> Champ, I ain't taking that shit down. You beat that shit down. That's yours, nigga. I'm talking about now, young say, hey, that shit was small. Like I say, champ, don't play with me, dog. He say, yo, you better get the fuck out of my face, man. I say, hey, man, don't play with me, champ. I swing on champ. Champ a big dude. Champ dodged me and grabbed me, and the motherfucker threw me in a dumpster. <laughs> I wouldn't even buy no dumpster. The man threw me in a dumpster. My whole body, I'm in a dumpster. And in the 80s, people were drinking 40s back then. I land in a dumpster. And as soon as I, I feel a 40 bottle, I get up and I throw that shit and bust him all the goddamn head. Champ, pow! Oh, goddamn youngster, all this behind some crack. I say, nah, motherfucker, because you threw me in a dumpster. <laughs> Denard coming through the hood, he say, hey, boy, I just seen you. You throwing in that dumpster. <laughs> Was it champ? I said, yeah, how you know? He said, motherfucker threw me in the dumpster, too. <laughs> this shit hard out here, ain't it, boy? I said, <laughs> so motherfucker out here doing shit. Now, a lot of dudes out here, man, people, you, I'm going through a lot of shit. It's a dude, I'm, I'm 14. I don't even have a bicycle. I just walk through the neighborhood. This dope fiend came up to me with a car battery. <laughs> now, youngster, now look, don't, don't start with the shit now. <laughs> this is a brand new ass battery. <laughs> I say, but I don't have no car though, man. What I'm gonna do with the car battery? Now, eventually, you out here hustling, you gonna come up, you gonna need this. <laughs> Now I'm sitting there contemplating it. But that shit got broken up. Cause I, I ain't know the dude's name until. Byron! And this motherfucker just standing in front of me with his car battery, just took off running. <laughs> this dude came, Byron, not catch your motherfucker that. You better bring my motherfucking car battery back here, bitch. <laughs> Man trying to sell me a stolen car. <laughs> this shit is fucking ridiculous. But you going through it and you don't know why, because you 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 just out of here. Yeah, and nobody's telling you what happens. Now, it's just dude. I mean, I'm, it's always somebody got something going on. This dude come through, he say, hey. Hey, youngster. She, I see what you got popping. Come on by my place. I got this white girl. Cause they always, for some reason, they always had a white girl that was smoking for some reason. <laughs> I got this white girl smoking like a motherfucking chimney. <laughs> Come on by my place. You can get your shit off. So I'm over there in their place, and I'm, I'm sitting at the table, and I'm serving rock for rock. Just, mm, they buying, they smoking. This shit get crazy. This boy smoking this little shit eat. Yeah, y'all the main out here. <laughs> this nigga blew crack smoke in my face. <laughs> and I said, you trying to get me addicted, bitch? <laughs> me and this man, we go to fighting, because I'm, I'm, I'm tripping about this crack smoke in my face. <laughs> Fighting, and as we fighting, he a gun fell out of his waist, a 25 automatic. Now, I ain't never had no gun beside my daddy, little, little Derringer. I picked the gun up. I'm not even holding the goddamn gun right. I'm not holding the, the trigger. I'm holding the outside of the gun. And I'm saying shit that I've only heard on TV. I said, everybody down. Don't make me pop your ass in here. I'm easing out the door, freeze. <laughs> so 
But now, I got a gun, first gun, and I done paid Rodnell his little 50 dollars. And I still had to get fronted again another 50 pack. Now I'm out here, just getting my little old shit off, and I'm happy to be at the park, and it's this, it's this gay dude named Tink, he a sissy. Now look, this is the 80s. You could call them sissies in the 80s. This is, I'm telling you, I'm telling you from the 80s. I'm not talking about now, don't write no goddamn letter on me. Cause you know, it was only one in the whole neighborhood back then. You know, and this sissy is named Tink. And we call him Tink the Sissy. And it's the 80s. But, and Tink, Tink is more funny than gay. That motherfucker was a funny dude. Tink came up, I'm at the park, Tink came up to Ronnell. Ronnell! Why do I gotta keep walking over here to get my crack? I don't like it. Why can't nobody sell crack over there in the apartment that I live in? I'm walking back and forth, back and forth, my little Reeboks is toe up, back and forth. <laughs> Tink is so goddamn funny to me because Tink got on the, them soft aerobic Reeboks. <laughs> and he got on leg warmers, like, like, like Richard Simmons. That boy got on leg warmers. <laughs> and he got them little Carl Lewis shorts. Remember the Carl Lewis shorts? And Tink, Tink got a wet curl. He got a wet curl, but he wear a Coca-Cola hat over his. And he got a half shirt on and it say Thriller. <laughs> and Tink is complaining that ain't no drug dealers in his apartments. And he tired of walking over here to get his cracks. <laughs> he goes around there like, you need to send some of your little crack workers over to the greens. I'm smart though. I'm listening to the conversation and I had already walked off. I knew, I know how Tink walked to his apartment. I met Tink in that parking lot. I say, Tink. He said, what? I said, um, I said, um, shit, is, is popping like that over there? He said, well, yes, we over there. <laughs> Do you want me to show you? I will show you. <laughs> Tink, I walked over to the apartment with Tink. Tink say, go to the pool. Go to the pool. I'll bring them. Let me tell you something. <laughs> 10 minutes later, I realized why Tink shirt said Thriller. Because them motherfuckers came out to work or like zombies. <laughs> But Tink brought him to me, boy. And I'm over there rolling. Boy, I look like, hey, remember Eddie Murphy and Trading Places when they, when, when they was at the stock market? <laughs> so now, don't nobody know how I'm coming up. Don't nobody know how I'm coming up. Ronnell has noticed I don't get fronted no more. I just come and buy my little drugs from it. I done got up to an ounce now. I'm up to an ounce. And I come to the park. I say, um, right now, let me, let me get that ounce that I need. But this day at the park, <laughs> Charles N Nino Brown is here. <laughs> the big man is at the park. And um, he talking to me. And, and I don't want to be talked to. I'm talking right now, let me get that, let me get that. He said, what's up, youngster? I'm, mm, 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 um, <laughs> right now, let me get that ounce so I can, I can bounce up out of here, brother. Man, he said, youngster, say, man, I heard about you, man. And I'm still, um, <laughs> let me get that ounce. <laughs> Ronnell say, um, Charles talking to you. I said, I hear him. <laughs> no, don't talk to him. Charles saying, hey, y'all, I see what you're doing, man. I heard about you, man. You were all in my neighborhood selling a lot of drugs, man. And then I'm, I'm trying to ask you, young, what you think about 
What you think about working with me? Um, let me get that out. <laughs> So I said, man, man, you, are you hearing me? I said, man, I, um, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm just, I don't really want to work for nobody. <laughs> man, this man said, nah, yes, I don't think you really get what I'm saying. Everybody around here work for me. You getting your product from, my, from who work for me. So basically, if I don't get no product, then you ain't gonna work. So man, you, what I'm saying is this here, man. And Charles pulls out the biggest gun that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> At the time, I didn't know it was called a Desert Eagle. That man pulled that gun out. He said, oh, youngster, what you, what you don't know, man, is what I'm saying to you is, man, that you gone work for me. Now, but what Charles don't realize, I've been out here selling dope for like four weeks now. <laughs> I'm way more harder than he think. I'm, 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 I've been galvanized by the streets at this time. <laughs> and so while, while Charles in there talking that shit with, a little, with his gun on me, he don't even see that I done reached in my little waistband and pulled out my little 25. And I hit his ass with the, no. <laughs> now I ain't gonna be selling for nobody, my man. Charles said, Oh, this little nigga that pulled a pistol out on me. <laughs> Boy, run there, you ain't tell me the little nigga got a heart. I didn't pull him pistol. Little nigga, you tough nigga. Let me see your little old pistol, nigga. <laughs> this nigga that took my gun. Man, nigga, little nigga, you remind me of me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this nigga pull a pistol on me, nigga. Yeah, take your little old pistol, nigga. <laughs> Say, man, little nigga, let me tell you something. If anybody fuck with you, man, you let me know, little nigga. Man, get that nigga eyes, man. Don't, nigga, that's on the highs. Don't even fuck with me. <laughs> this little nigga pull a pistol on me. I can't even believe this nigga. This nigga said, nigga, not on me, not today. That nigga pull a pistol. So you never think that you're going to need him. The man that said, you ever need him, you call him. Call on him. You never think you'll need him, though. So I'm 15 at this time, and um, I'm about 5'5", I'm about five, five, 100 pounds. And earlier in this particular day, I got into a little altercation with a dude named Quincy. Quincy is like the neighborhood strong Debo crack dude. And he'll beat you up and take your crack and your money and, and smoke it in your face. That's what he'll do. <laughs> so I'm walking through the apartments and Quincy see me. He said, yo, youngster, I know you're holy. What's up? Now, Quincy is about 6'4", 250, 260, big dude. And I say, Quincy, man, what's up, man? Give me a dime. I say, throw your money <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> man, why you trying to do me like that? I said, man, just throw your money on the ground, and I'll sit your dope right here. Man, you act like I'm a motherfucking pigeon or something. I said, no, I'm acting like you are a jacker. <laughs> little youngster, nobody wanna fuck with you. But I don't even worry about it, little nigga. Don't even worry about it. Balling this ten dollars up. Here get your fucking money, nigga. You a whole ass little boy for that. Chris is a grown ass man. They call me a whole ass little boy. You a whole ass little boy for that. 
So, this is the, the thing that taught me that I hold grudges as well. So, I get paged, and my page go off. When my page go off, that means go to the park. See, because see, this was these pages that didn't have numbers. They just, you could get paged, and you just know where the fuck you're supposed to be. It's just a beat. <laughs> so, I get to the park. It's a dude named Pat at the park. And Pat said, yo, so let me get something from you. I got two rocks left. I got about $4,000 strapped around my ankles in my socks. And I'm about to take it in for the day. I have two rocks left. I roll up. Pat said, what's up, you got something? I said, yeah. Now, I got two rocks left. Unbeknownst to me that Pat is Quincy's brother. And as I'm serving Pat, I get tapped on the shoulder. As I turn around, bang! Quincy has hit me with everything he fucking had. <laughs> Boom! And in Hollywood, I know when you see movies in Hollywood where people be up in the air when they get punched, you think that shit can't happen? <laughs> shit. <laughs> I am hoisted up in the motherfucker hell. <laughs> and if you don't think your body can bounce off cement, once again, you're wrong. <laughs> My body came out. <clears throat> and if you look at my face, I had this huge scar in my face where they did surgery, because Quincy broke five bones in my face, and my optic nerve and my whole eyeball was flipped up. So when I opened my eye, you would just see white. And I'm on the ground, and I knew it was Quincy, because my ear, when I landed, my ear was on the ground. And Quincy, early that day, had on dress shoes. <laughs> and when... <laughs> when I'm on the ground, all I could hear was the clicking of the dress shoes. <laughs> click, 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 click. So, that's all I could hear was that clicking, right? And so, I, I've been in my neighborhood a long time, so I could walk through my neighborhood without no eyes. I don't need my eyes to walk through my neighborhood. I finally get up, and I walk through the neighborhood just trying to get back to where we hang out at, and I'm touching shit. Oh, that's the mailbox. Oh, that's the pool. Can't jump that gate again. <laughs> walk through, and I get all the way to where I could hang out, and when I get there, fall to the ground, and Charles run up. Little nigga, what's wrong with you? I said, Quincy hit me in the eye. He said, I knew that motherfucker had just did something. I saw him running on a goddamn back street. That bitch had on dress shoes, didn't he? <laughs> so I'm 15 when that happened. It's a rapper here from here by the name of Bun B. Bun B has a crew called the Middle Fingers. In the Middle Fingers, it's a dude named Bandit. I tell true stories. This is why I tell people's name, so you can, if you want to, you can verify the story. <laughs> so I'm 18. We in Bandit's mama's Beretta. She drove a burgundy Beretta. And we in the car, and we driving down this street, which I can't say the name of the street because I don't know the statute of limitations on certain crimes. <laughs> so we riding down the street, and, and I'm on the passenger side, and out the corner of my eye, my good one, <laughs> I see a dude standing at the bus stop that looks like Quincy. And I said, yo, Bandit, Pull over right here and let me out. He said, man, you don't stay over here. I said, I know why I stay. <laughs> let me out. He said, what's up? I said, remember I told you about that dude who hit me in my face and I was 15? He said, yeah. I said, he back there at that bus stop. Let me out, man. He said, man, let that shit go. I said, <laughs> I can't do that. Can't do that. Get out. I'm walking down the street. And at this time, my gun of choice was a 380 
Beretta. That's my kind of choice. So I walk up, I say, say, my man, what's your name? He said, nigga Quincy. And I pow, pow, pow. Spit on him, walked out, bitch. And I walked out. Bandit pulls up, get in the car. I'm getting in the car, Bandit said, man, it's fucked up. It's fucked up what you just did. You shot that man in my mama car. I said, nah, I didn't shoot that man in your mama car. I shot that man outside your mama car. And I told you to go on about your goddamn business. Now, that is when I was 18. 19, I went to prison. Not for that, for something else. <laughs> this is how I know I hold grudges. 19, I went to prison. I'm 22 now, I'm on Darrington unit. 22, I'm on Darrington. And then on, in prison, TDC, they have a brush called a shitter brush. This is what you clean the toilet with. That's why it's called a shitter brush. We call the toilet the shitter. And it's usually made out of hard plastic or wood, depending on what year you came. You know what I'm <laughs> so I come in the day room, and I see a dude sitting at the table. I said, is that Quincy? <laughs> This motherfucker lived? <laughs> I picked that brush up. <laughs> I said, say, my man, what's your name? <laughs> and he said, Quincy, nigga. Bah! <laughs> Hit that man. Right on top of his head, split his shit over. <laughs> Man, this man start fighting. Cells come in and break the shit up, and I'm saying, they ship me, because I'm saying crazy shit. No, bitch, let me tell you something. One of us got to go home, because I'm going to murder you and your mama, and I'm going to write the letter. <laughs> I'm so mad I'm saying crazy shit. That's when I'm 22. Last year, <laughs> I'm in Walmart. <laughs> and I see a man <laughs> on a walker. I'm with my mama, I'm with my mama. I turned to my mama, I said, hey, go to the car. She said, what? I said, go to the car. She said, baby, what's wrong? I said, remember I told you about that man who hit me in my eye? Go to the car. Say, my man. <laughs> that dude turned around and said, nigga, don't you hit me. <laughs> I was on crack. I am sorry. something that I, I realized as I thought about all of this. I, um, I went to prison for six years. 
I got jumped on by a dolphin couple. <laughs> I got thrown in a dumpster. <laughs> got my eye messed up. Holding the grudge for a man all these years. And I realized I did all of that for a fresh ass tracksuit. <laughs> something wrong, it's a time that your moral compass says you should stop. So as I was selling drugs, it was one instance that I really knew that, hey, dog, you, you really kind of need to shut it down. I, I bought a BMW. I'm 17. I bought a BMW. I didn't have a cosigner, so I, I had to get this Dauphine named Al. to co-sign <laughs> for me. And this was a whole experience, because Al was doing way too much. All I said, Al, when you come in here, the man gonna ask you, are you my father? You say yes, that you can sense this deal. We ain't, the man didn't even say nothing to him yet. <laughs> the man just came and sat down and opened the files, and this motherfucker hollered, I'm his daddy! Shut your <laughs> So I buy, I get the car, and a year or so later, because I'm 17 at this time, a, like a year in, the idle valve and the idle valve control unit went out. And it's this dude in the apartments, because everybody who was on drugs didn't start on drugs. They was something productive probably before they got in that situation. <laughs> So this dude is a mechanic, certified, because it said on his, he got a work shirt, it say Kevin. <laughs> so he's certified. So he say, Youngster, now I can fix your car for you. You get the parts, I'll fix it. So that's what happened. The man, and then the man did a good job. Man did a good job. Now, the problem was this. This is my moral compass came in, because I'm in the car, and you know, when, when somebody fix your car, they tell you to start. They be, the hood still be up, they tell you to start. The man is leaning in the car, and he say, say young, fire up! <laughs> and I turn the car on, and I hear, Rrrr! and my car, I know my car, my car don't sound like that. So I, I immediately cut it off. And before I knew it, all I heard was, God damn it, youngster, you did knock my motherfucking fingertips off. He was leaning in the, in the hood, and the fan, the fan knocked his motherfucking fingertips off. And he bleeding like a motherfucker. He, he, God damn it, youngster, give me a napkin. I say, no, you need a doctor. <laughs> and I'm trying to give him, you know, them blue mechanic napkins. I'm trying to give him them. He wrapping his head up. That motherfucker just instantly red. I'm, he wrapping this shit up. And this is where I'm fucked up at. 
He wrapping his hand up, blood still everywhere. That man say, hey, Yonza, put that crack in my pocket, what you told me he was gonna get. I'm like, you still want the dough? But your fingertips dry I should have stopped. And, 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 I, and I thought about it, man, I thought about it. Thought about it. Man, I spent six years in prison. I got jumped on by a dolphin couple. I got thrown in a dumpster. Got my vision fucked up. I done shot and hit a man on a walker. I done knocked a man fingertips off. All that for a dope-ass tracksuit. <laughs>